Welcome to VSQLive Tutorials Deep Dive. In this series, we're building a real-world performance setup, step-by-step. Step. Continuing with our backing tracks, we'll move on to the audio tracks. In this video, we'll organize our backing tracks, explore dynamic mixing, mix inside the mixer view, set cycle markers, mix inside the tracks view, and create and assign mixer groups. In our last video, we set up the MIDI tracks for this performance. Now let's look at the audio tracks. Let's open our audio folder. Our first track is drums, the kick, snare, and toms. The track name could be a little unclear, so we're going to change that to kick, snare, toms. Then our next track is the overheads our tom reverb effect, our cymbal reverb effect, and we've got our bass, our high lead vocal, our end lead vocal effect, our counter melody vocals, and our outro synth. Now because we've separated our effects from our tracks, there's very little that we'll need to do in the mixer. We'll open the mixer view by going up here and clicking mixer. You can see we have four tracks here. The first two are the outputs from our two virtual instrument layers. The third is our song group, and the fourth, our output bus. VST Live's mixer only shows channels that are relevant to the current song being performed. If we were to create another song, Song 2, you can see that when Song 2 is selected, we only have the Song 2 bus. And instead of two layer outputs, we have one, because every song has one part, and every part, by default, has one layer. Let's switch back to our first song. To look at the tracks in the song's bus, we click the E button. We see all of our audio tracks and our MIDI tracks. We'll take the transport back to the beginning by double-clicking Stop, and then we'll click Play. Let's solo the kick, snare, and toms track. We'll add the overheads. We'll take this down so we have some headroom. All right, so that's right where our tom reverb goes. We'll take our tom reverb down here. Go back to our tracks. Let's isolate that section. We're going to move these markers just to that section, and we'll turn on cycling. Position the playhead. Go back to our mixer. Solo our reverb. Okay, that works. We'll turn off cycling and continue. We'll skip the symbol reverb for now. Now let's go back and set our cymbal reverb track. Like the tom reverb, this cymbal reverb only occurs once in the song. We'll move our cycle region to where that cymbal reverb event is, and we'll turn on cycling, and then we'll position the playhead inside the cycle. Instead of switching back to the mixer, we'll adjust the volume here. Okay, we'll turn off cycling. Let's move on to the vocals. We'll continue mixing here in the tracks view. I'll add it to the solo bus. Take our volume down. Lastly, we have our outro synth. We'll add that to the solo bus, take our playhead back a bit, the volume down a little.
we're all set. We've got our audio tracks in place and a basic mix. Now we'll move on to creating groups for those tracks in VST Live's mixer. We'll start in our mixer view. We'll find the song group and expand it. We'll click twice on the group icon to create two groups. They'll appear on the right side of the mixer view. Double click and change this name to drums and this name to vocals. Now we'll assign the audio tracks to their respective groups. We'll scroll left. We'll start with the drums. The output destination for tracks is displayed up here. We can see that all of these tracks are currently assigned to the stereo output. To change their assignment, click in this field. We'll choose drums, and drums, drums, and drums. We'll leave bass. Same thing for vocals. Choose vocals and vocals. And that's it. We now have our MIDI track set up. All of our drums are on one fader and our vocals on another. In our next video, we'll add live keyboards, guitars, and vocals to our project. <laughs>